Hello and welcome back to our next presentation. I'm really happy to introduce to you once again Emmanuel Katrakis from Eurek and Maria Vera Duran. Uh, and they will tell us all about circular economy uh, regarding plastic multilayer films. And they are right now starting a really interesting project regarding that uh, on the EU level uh, to find out how we can get to a circular economy regarding those hard to recycle materials. Emmanuel, Maria, thank you so much for being here. Have fun and we will have a little bit of time afterwards for your questions. So write them down and tell us all about it. Let's go. Yes, thank you very much, uh, Felix. Uh, thank you very much to Eric uh, as well for having us uh, on this Friday morning to present a Horizon 2020 project, um, a practical project which uh, basically aims at finding uh, solutions to how to recycle uh, multi-layer uh, plastics films. Um, this is a project that has uh, basically just started and which uh, we would like to, 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 to introduce um, since we are also eager to further interact with uh, actors in the value chains that could be uh, interested in the activities um, that uh, SIMPA, which is the name of this Horizon 2020 project, objectives are about. So I'm just going to uh, the next slide if my presentation wants to. Uh, yes. So the, the goal uh, of, of SIMPA um, is uh, basically to turn multi-layer film waste into valuable and circular resources through cutting edge technology and thus contribute to the European Greens Deal agenda. Um, this is a project that, as I said, has just uh, kick-started. The official starting date has been on the 1st of June 2021. We do have, um, together with uh, the other partners, uh, three years to complete uh, that uh, Horizon 2020 project, who has a budget of nearly 5 million euros and which is uh, basically coordinated by the uh, French Technical Center for uh, Plastics and Composite Materials um, and which uh, gathers uh, basically partners from going from uh, 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 north to, to south, uh, Finland, the Netherlands, Belgium, France and Spain and we have uh, in this uh, together with us, uh, since Zurich is also a partner uh, in charge of uh, communication, dissemination and on the policy and regulatory aspects that we'll be touching upon a bit later on. We have uh, as partners within that project research institutes, uh, waste management and, and recycling company, technology providers, multi-layer uh, 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 plastic film providers, be it for packaging or agricultural uh, plastic films, and also uh, a consulting company that uh, uh, is part of, of that project and help us for the completion of the different work packages on which we are working to, to structure uh, this uh, project. Now, if I go to the next slide, um, yeah, sorry for that. Uh, so we uh, basically, um, the, this, the, the, the objective of, of this project is entirely in line with the overarching uh, basically policy uh, initiatives that the European Commission has uh, taken uh, to support more circularity at large and more circularity for plastics. So we just put here three uh, uh, elements, the, the directive for packaging and packaging waste with uh, very ambitious uh, targets, which is also in the process of, of being uh, revised. Uh, the European strategy for plastics, which we have been touching upon in previous events of EREC, the Circular Plastics Alliance, uh, where multi-layer films are obviously um, uh, part of, of, of the working deliverables, and we have the ambitious targets uh, to uh, basically achieve by 2025 at least 10 million tons of uh, recycled plastics back into products in Europe each year. And um, 
to, to add to the consistency of, of the project with those overarching uh, initiative or, or strategies. Uh, a number of, of partners are also signatories of the CPA, of the Circular Plastics Alliance, and thus are committed to both the work that is being done and the deliverables. And that's the case, for instance, uh, if I'm uh, just a decade amount of, of players of companies like uh, VTT or Research Institute, like VTT, TNO, uh, URIC, and, uh, uh, and others as well. So um, this is really for the, 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 the consistency between, on one hand, the objective of the project and the uh, background uh, policy framework in which um, uh, basically it is uh, inscribed, if I may say, or it is a part of. Now, if we go back to um, uh, the uh, part that is related to uh, uh, some very uh, key numbers, those are the numbers of plastics demand by segment, not multi-layer film, the plastics demand by segment uh, based on uh, basically uh, the data that is available uh, from Plastics Europe. So we see that we have uh, more or less uh, total demand in 2019 of 50.7 million tons with uh, a large part 40 percent going to, to packaging and 3.4 uh, percent for the streams in which we are working going to agriculture now i'm just trying to press again yes so now if we dive a bit more into um, the packaging uh, by uh, main type of uh, packaging products and polymers being used. Um, the, the ones that are indeed uh, difficult to recycle are the complex packaging products, uh, mainly multi-layer and also PVC uh, packaging. And uh, the objective of that is uh, indeed uh, so to work on uh, those 2.1 million tons, which represent more or less 20% of the uh, total amount of um, uh, packaging placed on the market and to find practical solutions to recycle uh, this uh, particular stream. Now, if we look at multi-layer film characteristics, and I think it's important to uh, further explain why multi-layer films are being used today uh, in uh, packaging or agricultural or in agriculture, is because of the, their exceptional mechanical resistance, the fact that they are impermeable to oxygen and UV protection, that they are, have excellent properties as well when it comes to uh, moisture protection and water conservation. It is a lightweight material that makes uh, transportation, transportation easy, which reduces uh, thus the, the shipping cost and, and the emission associated to transport. And it obviously has uh, a very important contribution when it comes to uh, food safety and, and crop protection, which uh, though there are obviously, <laughs> those are completely two different types of uses, both of them contribute to reduce uh, food waste. So um, in terms of the um, applications for uh, multi-layer uh, plastic uh, films, um, which are used as packaging for the production of, of food and which represent, as we said, around more or less 2.1 million tons per year. And for agriculture, um, 0 0.6 million tons per year. Uh, you see that those multi-layer films are composed of uh, different types of polymers or associated with uh, inorganic materials like aluminium, depending on the use. Uh, that, uh, that that is uh, required to, 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 to those packaging products or those agricultural products. Um, and I'm not going to go through, through the entire slide. I think it's uh, self-explanatory, but if you see, uh, you know, you have different types of uses for food packaging and different types of uses for agricultural films, uh, which are provided here as uh, indicative uh, examples. Now, one thing that uh, is obviously important as to why um, this project uh, has uh, been uh, uh, su successfully selected and why, more importantly, uh, we are going to uh, continue and uh, work hard to make it a success is because today, indeed, 
the multi-layer material, uh, uh, the, the, the multi-layer plastic films, uh, due to the current lack of sorting and recycling technologies, um, are mostly going for uh, either energy recovery or landfill, but are uh, barely uh, recycled. So uh, there is uh, indeed a real uh, room for improvement when it comes to the proper action sorting and recycling of nuclear films, which is the very purpose of uh, SIMPA. Now, um, the, the concept is to develop the, the first recycling value chain for multi-layer films retained, re, multi-layer films retaining up based on a synergetic approach combining innovative compositional sorting, mechanical and physical recycling and upgrading solutions, so decontamination, properties improvement, inline adaptive process control. Um, and the project aims to demonstrate that multi-layer films can be circular into uh, into two large volume segments, namely uh, food and agriculture. Uh, as said at the very beginning, this we are just kickstarting SIMPA, so um, we, we are keen in explaining what SIMPA is about, but as of now, obviously, we have more a bit less than three years to uh, deliver on its objectives, and for doing that I'm, and diving a bit more into the topic, I'm going to give the floor to my colleague, uh, Maria Vera Duran, who is a project officer at Zurich and looking after and working on Horizon 20 uh, uh, project or EU funded projects at large uh, to dive a bit more into the topic. So Maria, the, the floor is yours. Um, you. And um, yeah. Thank you, Manuel, and hello to everybody. Um, and thank you for joining us today. Um, I will now summarize the, um, uh, in this slide how SIMPA will create a value chain for, for multi-layer recycling and reuse in the food and agriculture packaging. So multi-layers um, are difficult to recycle, not only because they are complex in their structure, but also, as Emmanuel showed, there's a wide variety on the market of multi-layers, with two layers, with three, with five, with different organic and inorganic layers. So the first step um, in SIMPA is to classify them in two big families. Simple multi-layers, there are multi-layers with um, only two layers or with organic uh, barrier and complex multi-layer with our multi-layers with at least three um, layers of with uh, inorganic or with aluminium containing. So if we go to the um, bottom of the graphic, the, the first step in SIMPA will develop will be uh, to, to develop fast and efficient composi compositional sorting, combining near infrared and digital watermarking. This uh, new methodology combining these two techniques will allow us to separate the multi-layers into the, in these two different families. Now, if the family of simple multi-layers will be mechanically recycled and the complex uh, multi-layers will, will undergo physical um, dissolution recycling. Um, uh, mechanical recycling will be preferred to uh, physical um, uh, recycling because of due to the lower environmental impact. Now it will be necessary to develop continuous decontamination process because the the, the packaging in the food applications is is contaminated and also the the um, agricultural films are degraded because of their exposure to light and in and in the exposure to light and soil. Um, and so uh, this kind of films need like develop a uh, continuous decontamination process and also upgrading solution. This uh, will go um, to the um, to the top of if you go to the top of the graph, um, this will enable uh, the reintroduction of recycling materials into industrial process. So we can uh, now um, e e include in for for a return to food contact applications. To close the loop, we, uh, the last step will be redesign plastic packaging based on the lessons we have learned in the whole process and prepare the next generation of 
100% recycled multilayers. From these studies, there will be also um, a legislative recommendation to the European and regulatory, regulatory bodies for new standards. We can't forget also the, the consumer attitude because SIMPA will work will work also to study the consumer attitude in the um, in their recycling behavior how this how we sort and also our attitude to towards uh, buying products with recycled or for buying uh, food packaging with recycling materials so as we can see this will cover all the stakeholders in the value chain to to facilitate the adoption of all solutions by from customers uh, was a management companies film producers and um, um, also users of these uh, films so next slide, next slide please Yeah, well, this is like the, the main innovations at aspect of SIMPA is like the, the sorting solutions that will be developed, uh, the mechanical, uh, the combination of mechanical and physical recycling, also the continuous decontamination that will enable us to close the loop for, for reintroducing the materials in, in the market. And of course, the assessment of the, of the solutions in the whole value. Next, yeah. So uh, SIMPA is expected to have a high impact because we will move right now it's less than two percent less than two percent is recycling the multilayers film. So we will move to between twelve and seventy-two uh, percent of uh, of recycling rate and also we will re reduce with this project the the use of bridging material the the re reduce the the waste that is incinerated of landfill and also the reductions of co2 emissions and of course the the increase uh, of the average value variations in the eu economy And with this last uh, slide, as Emmanuel said, uh, we uh, kick start the, the project in June. So this is the, the or work package one is the specification requirements from waste management and recycling organizations. So I want to show you that, that we ha are, have decided a survey to better understand the technical abilities, links and perspectives related to the recycling of multilayer fins in food applications and agriculture fins. So if you have expertise in plastic film recycling, or if you know uh, people who have, uh, we kindly ask you to, to help us to, to, by taking the, the survey to, to define the limits of the sorting and recycling packaging in, in agriculture fins. This is a short uh, survey, it will take only 10 minutes. And there's like four parts that for sorting, mechanical recycling and physical dissolution recycling and pyrolysis. So that is uh, all from my side. Yes, thank I you, Maria. Know. Thank you, Emmanuel, for this presentation for now. Sorry, Emmanuel, do you want to say something? No, no, we were just willing to, to, to give you back the floor in case there are questions. Um, so, yeah. Yes, for sure. Please put them into the question box. You can find it on the side of your screen. It's a little speech bubble with a question mark inside of it. Uh, furthermore, I've just put the link to the survey into the chat. You can just click on it and open it up for afterwards. It will, would really help out if you can have a look at this and tell us what you think about it. Mm. I would for now first like to dive, uh, dive, uh, sorry, dive deeper into uh, a few of these topics you've talked about, Maria, because I think there are different, different solutions for different, uh, different things in this value chain. And one of the things we heard this morning about was also the idea to eliminate multilayers uh, even further and to work with in, instead of multilayers with monolayers, which are then um, which then get a uh, get a layer put on top of a nano layer uh, to get the um, 
the specialties of multi-layer films, especially for things uh, like bottles, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, do you think this will be a possibility to reduce the amount of plastic that we need to recycle even further, or the uh, not that we have to recycle, but the multi-layer plastics we have to recycle in uh, with such great uh, work? Yeah, for, for the recycling, it's, it's easier if we don't have so many layers. But the thing is that the properties that have multi-layer films can uh, can be done with a uh, online with one layer film. Because when you have multi-layer, you have uh, a layer for us, a master barrier to, to protect uh, the water con conservation of the product, an oxygen barrier. So mm, these different layers have different properties that are needed for food protection and for crop predations in agriculture as well. So I think that's, that's there was a slide about all the properties because I think it's, it's important because we can't have the same with um, with only one one plastic, one tie of plastic. So I think that's the, the difference. Yeah, yeah. I, I think there is a, a balance to be struck between on one hand improving the design of product placed on the market, including plastic products placed on the market, and on the other hand, the uh, unique properties that some types of uh, uh, packaging products do have. And uh, that's why we are really working on both. And now I'm going a bit beyond uh, SIMPA as a project on trying to uh, foster uh, design of packaging products uh, in practice. And on the other hand, find uh, very practical solutions for uh, certain type of products uh, with unique properties which are today extremely hard to recycle. Totally, thank you so much. And can you maybe give us a little more, bit more insight on the on the other ideas you have to to conquer conquer the problems you've opened up uh, with sorting, with uh, design, with consumer uh, consumer uh, consumer attitude. How can we go, go into that and what are maybe steps you will try out and uh, study? Well, you, there are plenty of initiatives. First, uh, there will be, uh, we expect important changes uh, when it comes to uh, the essential requirements that packaging products will have to comply with, uh, with the revision of the packaging and package waste directive from the, the very design to the use of uh, recycled plastics into those uh, packaging products. Um, second, there are initiatives taken by different organizations to uh, uh, basically uh, give a very practical recyclability assessment and scores to packaging products, which uh, I think uh, are very good initiatives uh, since uh, basically the, 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 there is a uh, a real uh, assessment of the recyclability features of the packaging products that are being placed on the market based on the best available techniques that are used by the recycling industry. And though we, we obviously try to stay neutral based on the different, uh, um, how to say, uh, uh, schemes that are existing or are being developed on, on the market, uh, we hope that uh, they will serve as a basis when it comes to uh, uh, reviewing those essential requirements. Um, and obviously there is a, a lot to do uh, beside uh, what the value chain is doing uh, within uh, those the revision of those binding instruments or within the Circular Plastics Alliance um, in educating consumers to make more sustainable uh, choices. But to do that, we need to provide the tools. And I know I'm always making a kind of parallel, but this has been done vastly for energy uh, related products. Everyone uh, who goes uh, in, a, in a shop to buy uh, an electric or electronic appliances know the energy efficiency of the product uh, she or he procures. Uh, there is no uh, similar obligation vesting legislation when it comes to the, the resource efficient aspect. And uh, what I've said before will contribute, I think, to provide the tools to the consumer to be better informed about uh, the, uh, the, 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 the circular, the more circular, the more sustainable features of a uh, packaging product that uh, she or he buys. So yeah, I think we are going a bit beyond indeed uh, SIMPA here, 
about the policy and regulatory developments that are being expected in the in the coming months but at the same time having those uh, eu funded projects like horizon 2020 to work along the value chain on how to recycle here multi-layer plastic fins is indeed extremely useful to find solutions that can be implemented along the value chain in a near future thank you so much Maybe we can go a little bit deeper into the into the recycling process because here comes uh, the question comes up uh, how what do you want to get uh, out of the recycled material and of course for a really circular economy you would have to do uh, film plastic films from the recycled films once again um, is that a goal you are you are after do you think this this is achievable and how do you how do you uh, com uh, combat the possible uh, possible hard things like impurities and br brittleness for films? Maria, well, I don't know whether yeah. you, you want to take that question. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, uh, there's like a uh, Simba will innovate in every step of the devaluation. So first, like um, right now, like um, digital water marking is not uh, widely used to for this uh, is compositional compositional sorting. So the combination of these two techniques will allow us to to sort and identify identify the materials with an accuracy of 99%. So this is a a, a first step, an important one, and also. As you say, the the contaminate the continuous decontamination process and upgrading uh, solutions for the plastic because uh, there for food applications I have we have to decontaminate them and also for agricultural things we need upgrading solutions. Um, here we have uh, uh, partners research institutes such as Aimplas that have a wide expertise in this the uh, contamination process. Uh, so this will enable like just to reintroduce the materials in the in the value chain for new food contact applications also for agricultural cleans. I think Felix at this stage, since we have just kickstarted the project, we cannot uh, preempt the, the, the final results. This is really the objective. So of course, for sure. Uh, thank you so much. And I think that is that is a good end actually to our presentation here because that is that's the thing about it. We are all in a big big learning curve when it comes to recycling. We are looking forward to finding out what are the best things we can do, what are the the steps we have to take. And I think um, your work is one of the things bringing us forward in that direction. So. Thank you very much for this and thank you very much for being a part of EREC here once again. Emmanuel, do you have any last uh, last thoughts on the topic you would, or Maria, one of you who would like to share some or otherwise I would close this uh, webinar for now. No, just to, to thank you for having the opportunity to, to present and again to encourage uh, participants that are, uh, you know, um, active in, in, in multi-layer plastic films to take on the survey and to respond to the survey. Yes, do yeah. that. And, <laughs> and also, that's... Yeah, sorry, <laughs> and no, also uh, that follow, we have already our social media account, so uh, please follow to be updated with the, with the solutions of SIMPA. Yes, totally. Head over to, to Eurek, to SIMPA and get in touch for anyone who is from the industry. And with that, thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for taking part. Uh, we have a few more uh, webinars today. We will go on at 11.45 with Mirko Kruse, who will talk a little bit about uh, the recycling industry in Hamburg in Germany and tell us all about that in detail. And with that, Emmanuel, Maria, thank you so much. Have a nice day and see you on see you next time at EREC next year at the 10th of October. Really looking forward to that. And bye-bye. See you soon. Bye-bye. Thank, thank you very much.